Now that we're finished modeling our couch, we need to UV unwrap it in preparation for adding textures. But of course, before we can UV unwrap it, we need to add some seams. So if you're not familiar with that, with um, UV unwrapping and adding seams, I won't be teaching it in this video, but you can just follow what I do and you, um, you, sh you should be fine. Okay, so let's begin with the um, with adding in some seams. I'll time lapse this part of the video just to save time, but I won't time lapse it very fast so you can still see what I'm doing. Use Ctrl E to bring up the menu for marking a seam. Now that we've finished marking our UV seams, we can begin unwrapping our couch. So I'm just going to bring over this menu, um, this uh, slider over here and open a new window and I'll change it to the UV image editor. Okay, so I'm going to select the base of our couch and then I'm going to go into edit mode and, hit and select everything by A and then you can hit U for unwrap. That's going to select this um, unwrap function right there. Okay, so this, um, you can see over here. This is our 2D representation of our 3D object. So ideally, if we want a realistic um, leather couch, we want this 2D representation to be perfectly in scale with our 3D model, of course. But for some reason, and I don't know why it's doing this, I've never had a problem with UV unwrapping before, but for some reason, this is just not in scale, and I'll show you in a second to prove my point. And this has got nothing to do with the couch tutorial, so I'm just going to quickly fly through this. This is just to prove my point, it's got nothing to do with the actual couch. Alright, so I'm just going to plug this color input into the surface output just so I can show you this over here. And have I unwrapped this properly? Oh, I haven't selected my image. Duh. Okay, so you can see over there, from my understanding of you being wrapping and my experience so far, um, these this these UV seams here should have unwrapped this couch perfectly, so these all these blocks would be the exact same size and scale and everything. But you can see it's obviously not. But I have figured out a way around this using a unwrapping it using a um, add-on called the Texture Atlas. So I'll be showing you how to do that now. Okay, so by default the Texture Atlas Texture Atlas is disabled, but we can enable it by going to File and then User Preferences. Mine's on my second screen here, I'm just going to bring it over. And then just by searching Texture Atlas over there, and you can just enable that. Okay, so I'm just going to hit N to bring up this menu over here. And then I'm going to scroll down to Texture Atlas. Oh, sorry, it's not over there, it's actually over here. But texture Atlas right here. I'm going to select this plus button to add a new Texture Atlas. I'll keep the default name, that's fine. And then I'm going to select everything on my couch except for the legs. And then I'm going to say add selected, just like that. And then I'm going to go over here to stop manual, um, stop manual unwrapping. I'm going to select that and you'll notice it's, it's not showing any of our modifiers, including our mirror modifier and our subdivision modifier. But don't worry about this. As soon as we finish unwrapping, we can select finish manual unwrap and everything will be returned to normal. Okay, so I'm going to go into edit mode and then with everything selected, I'm going to hit U and then unwrap. And you'll immediately see, if I go into the material menu, you can immediately see that these cubes are now perfectly in scale and the same size. So this is a, a real nice workaround. Um, and that's, that's giving us exactly what we want. Okay, so I'm going to select um, finish manual unwrapped. Uh, finish manual unwrapped, sorry. Now that those have 
these UVs have now been saved, so we don't need this texture atlas if we want. We can even delete it, but I'll, I'll keep it there for now. Alright, so, um, yes, that's it for the UV unwrapping. Let's move on to the, the texturing. The image texture I'll be using for this couch can be found at cgtextures.com. I'll post a link in the description. What you want to do when you have that image is open it up in GIMP or Photoshop and then crop out a small section of the image. Or well, small, like maybe about a quarter of the size or... Yeah, and then using software like Insta uh, Insane Bump or Crazy Bump. I think it was called Crazy Bump. It's a normal bump. No, it was Crazy Bump. Yeah, Crazy Bump. You can generate a normal map and then a specular map. And we'll use those two maps in the creation of our image text of our couch leather. Alright, so... Yeah, I'm just going to drag open this uh, slide over here, and then with this bottom one, I'm going to make this node editor. If you don't have a lot of experience in Blender or um, using this node editor, uh, not to worry. This is going to be a very simple setup, so you don't need a lot of experience, and I'll try to explain everything as I go. So I'm just going to delete this image texture over here. This is our UV um, grid you can see over here, so I'm going to select that and hit X, so we can delete that. And of course, we need to add our camera. So I'm just going to add a camera, hit numpad 0 to go into the camera view mode, and then shift F. And this is going to allow us to um, control the camera as if it was a um, like a, a first person game, a first person shooter using the double A, S, and D keys. I'm just going to position it up there. Okay, so now lights. Let's add in a key light and then one other light. So this key light is going to be a direct light, of course. Or we'll just make it about there. And strength, let's say, 200. Let's see how that looks. And uh, with this color, doesn't have an input. Input something. Ooh, 200 is bright. Take that way down. Well, not way down, just 150. Let's see how that looks. Uh, still maybe a bit too bright. Just say 100. Let's see. Yeah, that looks alright. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate this light and just move it over on the x axis and then uh, maybe over there actually. And then position it like that. Okay, then we're going to take this one's brightness down to about 50. Yep, like that. And that light's going to help us when we apply our specular map. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so let's begin. I'm just gonna hit Shift A and then hit the search menu over here, and then I'm just gonna search for a glossy, glossy shader, and a mix shader. I hardly ever um, go into these menus over here, but you can't do that if you prefer that. I just prefer searching for my my nodes. Okay, and then in going to add an image texture and this will be our normal map so we can go ahead and open up that normal map uh, da, 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 where's it? here it is I'm going to open that <clears throat> and because we UV unwrapped our couch we can control the scale of it by using a mapping node so let's throw that in now One, a mapping node and then in order to tell Blender that this image is UV unwrapped we need to add in a texture coordinate Let's add that as well. Then I'm going to take the UV output into the vector input of our mapping node and then plug the vector output into the vector input of our image texture. And then I'm going to add a bump map, no, sorry, a normal map. A normal map node. So I'm going to drop that over there and then taking the normal output into both the normal inputs of the glossy and the diffuse and then taking the color output into the color input of our normal map. If I can get there. There you go. Okay, and lastly, I want to set this image texture to no non color data. And let's see if this is taking. Yes, it is. You can see it's it's working there. So, um, yeah, these black values you can see is shadows that's being cast. At least I think. Actually, it isn't. I don't think. Because then there wouldn't, you wouldn't see them here. Yeah, that's just. Um, yeah, I never mind. Okay, so we need to adjust the scale of this, of course, because this is just way too large. So I'm going to take the scale to about 35 on all those inputs. Let's go.
go into I'm just gonna um, hold down control shift and then I'm gonna select this image texture and that way we can see it we can just see the image texture without the shading so it'll just run faster actually it's not running very fast let me go to, just go to texture view mode so we can see how this looks so I think that's an alright scale for now we can change it later but 35 looks good okay and then I just want to add in another texture I'll just drop this and right on top I'll duplicate this by control D and I'll plug the same mapping uh, the same mapping output into the input of our image texture it'll be silly to have two corresponding textures especially when they're these type of textures like a normal and a specular for those who don't know a specular map is um, a map which will tell blender which parts um, like if you have a, a piece of wood and there's crevices in the wood the light is going to the light won't reflect in the crevices as brightly as elsewhere on the wood it's um yeah so in order to tell blender we can just plug it into the factor of our diffuse and our glossy what i like to do is add in a mix rgb as well and then plug it into the bottom value and then select the the type to multiply and then just select the color uh, plug the color into the factor of our mix shader so this is just going to let us control how much um, how much of that effect I was telling you about is we're going to let in. So we're just going to keep it at 1 and we can adjust it later if we need to. So putting it at 1 is as if this shader was, didn't even, as if this node wasn't even here. What can I actually see it here? It actually is changing in the viewport when I mute it. But um, anyway. Okay, so that looks good. Let's see what this looks like with wave paint, no not with wave paint um, render, sorry I'm getting confused here but come on there we go okay. ah yes, we're missing one important one important thing, the actual black color, so I'm just going to take this um, diffuse I'm going to take the strength way down as well I'm just going to open up my other blend file so I can see um, what values I have here, just to Save time. Alright, so I have my other blend file opened up here just so I can save time. The strength value is 0 0.25. So you can set that and then this main this diffuse color over here is gonna be our black leather texture. So we can put that just a little off black, almost completely black. And then I'm also going to change this glossy because I don't want this to be um full uh, for white, I just want this to be um, reflecting just a little darker, maybe something around there into the grey. You can see we now have a... Um, this is really looking quite good. And this is actually almost done. But let's just have a look at the specular map. See if this is working nicely. I can see it down here, the buttons quite nicely. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, you can see that there. Okay, let's see. Maybe we should take this down to 0.5. It's looking a little strange. 0.5. I wonder if changing this value will... Okay, I'll write about that. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep that at 0.5, actually. I think that's a good value. Cool, yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, so... Yeah, let's see, what else? If you want to take it a step further, we can we can add in to add some variation in the leather not uh, just so it doesn't look so smooth we can add in a noise texture and oh then it's slowing down a bit there you go and to show you what this noise texture looks like alone you can see it here it's just a bunch of um different uh different colors in sp uh, spotchy in a spotchy fashion but uh, yeah in order for it to um, be spotchy equally over our mesh, I'm going to take the UV output of our texture coordinates into the vector and there you go, it's um, evenly spotchy actually let's duplicate this now we're going to adjust the noise texture I'm just going to take it down, scale down to something that would be um, the right amount of spotch <laughs> something like that and then we'll be using this 
as a displacement, so we'll plug it into the displace into the dis so the displacement input of our material um, output. And then that's going to just give a bit of variation, and it won't look so so smooth. Okay, but one important thing to note is when you use the, uh, this displacement input, Blender is taking a grayscale image, so that means the blacker the image, um, the blacker the spots are going to be. That means the more depth it's going to add, and the lighter the less depth. So in order to convert this into a black and white image, what I usually do is add in a color ramp. Take them off the back. I don't know what I was writing there, but add in a color ramp. Plug the color into the factor, and then let me show you what that looks like. There you go. That's now this is now a grayscale image. So that's cool. And then if we want to, we can drag up the blacks to make it a little blacker. I think I will do that. So let's drag the whites and the blacks down a bit. Uh, no, let's just take a black step. Uh, it's about there, maybe. And then I'm going to... Yeah, okay, so let's plug this into the displacement and let's see it in action. I'm also going to add in, like I did over here with this specular, I'm going to add a mix shader. And I'm going to take the color output into the bottom input of our multiply and the color into the displacement. And this is going to allow us to change the amount of displacement of once as you can see if I put this to one it's gonna be really harsh. But if I take it down to something like 0.2 it's more attractive and it just works a little nicer because it's of course it's less um um it's less bumpy in value. So let's do something about 0.3. Let's see how that looks. And that looks alright. Change this yeah, what am I doing? Yeah, somewhere like that. Okay, cool. So I think that's about it. Let's um let's do a quick rend. See how that looks. I'll keep it at fifty percent resolution and sampling. We don't do much samples because it doesn't have anything reflective. Oh it does very I mean it's not things aren't um very glossy, so I'll just put the render samples at say fifty. And let's run this and see what it looks like. Hmm, that looks nice. Just need to up the samples quite a lot because uh, I made a call down wrong, didn't I? Yeah, it's quite a lot of fireflies here. But uh, that's alright because we can still see what's, what's going on. I think that looks quite nice. I'm quite happy with that. Okay, so last thing we need to do, let's go into the compositor by selecting these two um, overlapping images. I'm going to select Use Nodes. And then let's drag this composite out, uh, let's make a little room, and let's add a vignette. First I'm going to add a mix shader in over here, drop this into the bottom input, and then take the alpha into the factor, and now we can... Is this transparent? It's not transparent, sorry, we have to select this transparent value over here. And then this line will work, so let's just render it this one more time. Alright, there you go. Uh, sorry about that, I thought I had selected transparent early on. I usually select transparent when I model. Oh wait, I did not. Oh, uh, sorry, that's when I usually, I can find it. Uh, I'm going to duplicate this mix shader, and then I'm going to add in a blur node. Plug that into the bottom output, and then a lens dist distortion node. I'm going to plug this image into the image input of our blur node. Then I'm going to select nothing, I'm just going to... Go 0.1 for this distort, and then I'm going to select fast Gaussian and select relative. I'll do about 20% on the X and the Y. And what we have is nothing because we need to change this this uh, mix type to multiply instead of mix. And there we have it. Okay, so that's it for this video. Um, I hope you learned something. And um, yeah, if there's anything I can do better in my videos, then I'd really appreciate. Appreciate it if you can tell me, maybe if you want to see less modeling, more time lapsing, or uh, more materials, and maybe I should focus more on character creation, or just whatever you you want to see in the future. If you could just tell me, that'd be that'd be helpful. And as always, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.